If you've ever believed that Battlefield Bad Company 2 was the best Battlefield, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like it, comment. The comment section is out of control. Get in there, make it crazy. I appreciate you guys. I'll try to answer as many questions and comments as I can, despite how crazy they are. Guys, this channel is brought to you by Brown Owls. A big thank you to them for sponsoring the channel. They are making awesome things for 2A. They, of course, have a huge website with everything you could possibly want, and they just donated like $150,000 to, to the Firearm Policy Coalition. So they do great things for 2A. A big thank you to them, and of course, we can't forget the Sonoran Desert Institute for sponsoring this video. If you're looking to get into gunsmithing, definitely go and check them out. Ladies and gentlemen, by often forgotten, but most certainly not by me, 1911 Alpha Ones. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about a very cool rifle, and that is the BRN-180, made and sold by Brown Owls, which brings us to our full disclosure. So for the first time, I believe in this channel, we are doing a video on a rifle that is also made by our sponsor. So obviously, there are financial ties there. And one thing that I've always harped about, and that has always been important to me when it comes to this channel, is clarity on the disclosures of my relationship with companies when I do a review. So of course, when it comes to Brownells, they are our sponsor. They support the channel financially. So understand that because of that, I don't really consider this a review. As impartial as I am and as much as I'll throw exactly what I think about this rifle out there, because of that financial tie, we're gonna consider this more an overview of a rifle than we will consider this a review. And to be clear, there are plenty of other people who have done reviews without financial ties for Brownells and I'd highly recommend taking a look at them, like Mr. Guns Gear and a couple other different guys. But in any case, I still want to do a video on the BRN-180 because it is both popular and a pretty interesting and compelling design. So, with our full disclosures out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this rifle right here. We're going to go tip to butt like we always do, but before we do, it's important to kind of note what this is in the first place. So the BRN-180 is a modern take on the AR-18, AR-180, and the question was, what if production had continued, how would this gun have been modernized? And those are good questions. So this is Brownell's take on what they believe would have happened. So understand certain things were simplified because quite frankly, uh, you know, how much you want to spend on making a firearm, they don't want it, they want it to cost, not too much. So for example, the upper from Brownells, of course, fits on an AR-15 lower. In this case, this is a Brownells lower, but it will fit on any old modern mil spec type AR-15 lower. So because of that, certain changes had to be made to the receiver. And we'll talk more about that later, but understand there are certainly some differences from the AR-180 from which it was derived, but it is a short stroke gas piston system that is chambered in 5.56. There's also a 300 blackout option. So with those things being said, See what we always do. We're gonna go tip to butt. And we're gonna talk about this rifle right here. So to start off with, at the muzzle, any old muzzle device can be attached. In this case, we have a Q muzzle device with a Q uh, suppressor on there, and it is a 30 cal suppressor. Um, anything can be mounted. So what it comes with is one of their three prongs, and that is a throwback to the original AR-180 three prong that was originally on the old AR-180s. And to be honest, I'm not a big fan of the muzzle device as it comes on the BRN-180. My problem with it is that it doesn't really do a good job at flash suppression or in correctly balancing the rifle when it's firing. In fact, the flash suppressor ends up overdriving the rifle. So if we were to fire with the muzzle device on this rifle, it actually pushed the rifle down more than is necessary based on the recoil that you're getting from the weapon. So this is a problem because it's constantly driving your weapon down. A well-balanced compensator or flash hider should pretty much push all of that recoil impulse back in your shoulder. And I do understand that they are trying to make kind of a throwback and that's kind of the whole point of it. And that's probably a design flaw with the original AR-180. But I'm going to go ahead and throw out all my kind of problems with it as they come. That being said, it is a cool and classic throwback. But put pretty much any other muzzle device on there and you're going to have better results. So on this guy right here, we have the BE Myers 249, a Surefire 3 prong will also work just as well. The point is, it will accept any muzzle device. Anything is, I think many muzzle devices, including the A2, are probably better. But of course, you lose that aesthetic when you go to something else. So one of the coolest parts about putting a muzzle device on the BRN-180 is after you have it indexed and tightened down, you can push the locking nut up into it, screw it into it, and it provides more pressure on it. So I've done that in addition to the Vibratite, and it has been absolutely rock steady. So 
that is something that I can definitely say for that design. I like that quite a bit, and several other firearms have done that, but I definitely like the inclusion of that on the BRN 180. Now, regarding the ability of that lock to kind of keep a muzzle device on, as of this filming, we have about 2.5K um, on various rifles. So most of them on this long boy right here, about maybe 800 or 1,000 on this guy right here. And in all those cases, the muzzle device has been rock steady. So they've done some very good things in their engineering there. So with that being said, let's move back to the barrel itself. So the barrel is interesting. It's 4150 carbon. It's nitrated on the inside. Um, the barrel is good. I have no problems with the barrel. The accuracy for the system, of course, is going to be a little bit less than a AR-15 around that price range. And the reason for that, of course, is a short stroke gas piston system just inherently is going to have a little bit less accuracy than a direct impingement system. Now, that's not something I'm going to push against the BRN-180, but just understand that there is that difference there. Now, there are, of course, a lot of benefits to a short stroke gas piston system, which we will talk about in a little bit. But that being said, is the accuracy difference really that big? Now with federal gold medal match, I'm typically getting between 1.4 to 1.5 and I could probably do better. It's probably all me, but it is a wholly accurate design. And in fact, in most cases is more than enough for what you're doing now. Like a really great AR-15 will push sub MOA. So we are talking in pretty small increments of accuracy between the two um, different brands that we have out there, but it should just be noted that the accuracy on the BRN 180 is quite good for what it is and is more than acceptable for most of the uses that you guys will be using it for, varmint hunting and that type of stuff. Now, the coolest thing, of course, about the BRN 180 is the fact that it uses a short stroke gas piston system, specifically the system pioneered in the AR-18, AR-180. And one of the best parts about that system is that although the AR-180, AR-18 never took off, that system of operation is present in literally every modern piston system out there. Of course, a little bit modified anything from the ACR to the SCAR to the G36. Um, the AR-18, AR-180 really paved the way in showing how reliable, simple, and how gentle a recoil impulse a short stroke gas piston system could have. Now, when it comes to the BRN-180, we can't really talk about this, about this without talking about how smooth this weapon is. Um, simply cycling it, I hope you can hear the smoothness of the action as it slides on the rails. I'll go ahead and cap this because it wants to pop off. But it is a very well-made, very smooth system. And of course, these uppers are made by PWS, a company very familiar with short stroke gas piston systems. So of course, it should come to no surprise that these are well built. But you never know what you're gonna get when it comes to these short stroke gas piston systems. And I was very pleasantly surprised with how smooth and how pleasant these weapons are to shoot, and especially how wonderful they are with a suppressor. To date, this is probably one of my favorite guns to fire suppressed. It just is so smooth. There's no gas blowback into your face due to the fact that you have that short stroke gas piston system. Because as much as I love my AR-15s, in this case, we have this URGI right here, which is an absolute beast fact of the matter is, is that once I get this little bitch suppressed, that thing is coughing right in my face and it is making me cry and crying isn't cool, dudes. I'm just kidding. But the point is, as I'm firing this, that gas with that short stroke gas piston system is just venting off. So I'm not getting it directly back into my face, which means with a suppressor mounted on this guy, you can really push it about as fast as you can push it. There's no problems compared to with an AR-15. Often you'll find after about seven or eight rounds, you start getting gassed out, it starts drying up your eyes and you really kind of have to stop and pause or just fire blindly. So I can't, I can't say enough about how pleasant this is to shoot. And in addition to that, because the gas system is tunable, and what I mean by that is that we have both a suppressed and a unsuppressed setting, you can kind of really tune it to what you want. Now it isn't in increments like the um, FAL is, but at the same time, we have a two position uh, system on the BRN-180. So right here, of course, on the short barreled variant, that little adjustment point is very easy to get to, whether it be with a bullet tip, your multi-tool or something, turn it from suppressed to unsuppressed. Now, on the longer variant, you have to get something down in there. I guess I'm a little long. But um, one thing that I will note is that in the case of this can, which is a 30 cal can, it actually would not run 
on the suppressed setting because the suppressed setting used so little gas, it was in anticipation of a suppressor with much more back pressure. And the Q-Can really doesn't have a whole lot of back pressure. And so I just ran it on the unsuppressed setting and it ran like a champion on the unsuppressed setting and was incredibly pleasant. And there was virtually no recoil on this guy. So I can't say enough things about how well tuned this gas system is and how good it feels to shoot. Now, unsuppressed, I don't think it's quite as impressive. I think that many weapons stack up pretty favorably against it and better in many ways. But man, with the suppressor, these uppers really shine, especially the 10.5 variant. And another thing that has to be noted about the AR-18 system is it's used by most modern military weapons. It is known to be a extremely reliable, extremely robust system that has been well proven. So I have no qualms about the gas system itself. Now, there are problems, of course, with a short stroke gas piston system. Compared to a DI, these guns get hot. And especially with this handguard, now as cool as this handguard is, and I want to talk about that for a second, the handguard is awesome. It's very thin, it's very small, it's easy to wrap your hand around, and it has M lock on all sides, just like you'd possibly want. And for a piston system, it is small and it is awesome. Now, the problem with that is many hard use, duty use type piston systems typically have a thicker and a handguard that is spaced further out from the barrel and the piston system because man, do these things get hot. And so one thing that a lot of people have noted is how hot this gun will get. And yeah, absolutely. That's pretty common and inherent to short stroke gas piston systems and DI systems as well. But these will certainly heat up just a little bit faster. So a glove is definitely necessary to get the love from this gun. Now, as far as removing the handguard, it was quite simple. The Gen 1 was a little bit different, but on the Gen 2, Nice little nut, you just screw that thing out and then you can remove the handguard. Whether that be to install a new handguard from another company or to do any bit of maintenance that you need to do on the rifle itself. Now, of course, on top of the handguard and the upper receiver, we have this nice Picatinny that goes all the way down to mount any of the stuff that you could possibly need to LARP. And that's what matters. Now, that brings us over to the built and the charging handle and all that good stuff. But before we do, what I want to show you is how interesting the bolt is if you're not familiar with the AR-18, AR-180 series. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cap the back because it's just pressure fit in there, push that out. So once we have pushed that out, you can see here that we have our very characteristic AR-18 dual action springs. Very interesting system. If you fire the ACR, the SIG, they're all very similar. We can then pull out the charging handle at that point and then we can get our bolt. Um, one thing that many people have noted about the Bolt and Bolt Care Group is, is how simple a system it is. It is a just a very simple, um, very reliable mechanism. And I can't say enough about that, about how simple the system is, which is good. You want less moving parts. That brings us to the HK G11. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and let's get over into the charging handle. So the charging handle is the exact throwback to what was originally on the AR-18. And that's great for back then. Nowadays, it's, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest, and I probably will replace this with something else at some point. And the reason for that is because it's livered up. Um, what happens is, depending on the optic that you're using, it can get in the way. Now, it's cleared most of my optics that I have had, but depending on what you have, it might be a bit of an ass pain. But, you know, it, it's very odd because on the one hand, uh, this weapon, of course, has a bolt lockback feature on the last round like a modern AR-15, unlike the original AR-18s, but it also has a bolt release. So I find that you're kind of not really using the charging handle a whole lot, but that's not really a bad thing. If you really want to, you can rock in a fresh mag and you can charge that off like an AK and just really get into your AK game, but it isn't necessary. It's mostly used for the, you know, clearing off functions and that type of stuff and it works fine. Now, it is, a reciprocating charging handle because it is attached to the bolt right there. So it's something to be aware of. And it just kind of feels cool when you shoot it, to be honest. But moving back, we have a dust cover right here. And this kind of brings me to my main complaint with the BRN 180. So the dust cover is quite good. Um, with this up and the bolt forward and the magazine in, this is a fairly sealed system and it works quite well. However, as a weapon fires, the dust cover is going to push down. And what that does, as you can see right here, is it opens a fairly large and wide channel directly into the internals of the lower. If there's one thing that can be said about the AR-15 that is one of its greatest weaknesses is the fact that once you get any bit of dirt or rocks down into that trigger component on the AR-15, that thing, it fucking dies. So, 
The problem with this open gas port is, of course, if you're in a dirty environment with a shit ton of rocks and dust, there's a possibility of it jamming up that mechanism in your trigger and killing your gun. Now, of course, you can get those rocks out of there and then it will run again, but that is my really greatest complaint. Um, that's probably me being unnecessarily hard on the gun, but it's for that reason that I really don't kind of consider this in the kind of duty role. And people have argued against me on that, but that's my opinion, probably me being overly harsh. I have pretty strict standards when it comes to that stuff, but this doesn't, because of that, it doesn't really fit into a hard duty use category, you know, to hell and back type rifle for me. And if you're not familiar with what I mean by that, so if we take a look at this URGI right here, it's AR-15, uh, even once we pop the dust cover down, you can see that's a fairly sealed system. It's gonna be very difficult for rocks, dirt, and grime to get in there and specifically to gum up the trigger components of this particular weapon. If we take it a step further and we take a look at the MCX, you can see it is roughly the same thing where, yes, we have a very similar operating mechanism, but at the same time, we have a very familiar AR-15 type design where it is pretty much sealed when the bolt is forward. And so I know that was kind of unnecessarily harsh perhaps on the BRN-180, because I really do like it quite a bit, but if there's one thing that you should be aware of, I guess, if you really wanted this to be, hey, I'm gonna go grab my rifle, I'm gonna run up into the mountains and I'm gonna fight the commies, I'm gonna fight whoever the fuck you're gonna fight, might not quite be it simply due to that. Now, that being said, it is still a very fun and very enjoyable rifle, but that is me, enough of me nitpicking and being harsh on the weapon. Let's go ahead and let's get on. So the lowers that are made for the BRN are, of course, any AR-15 lower is going to work, but the ones that they make specifically for the BRN-180 are, of course, very well made and very handsomely done. I like the styling of them. They just look good to me. And there's nothing that's really different about them compared to your typical AR-15 lower. So there isn't really a whole lot that needs to be said about them. Of course, you can run an ambi if you want from CAC or whatever. Anything is going to work on your BRN-180 upper. Now, in the case of this, we do have a Geisley trigger in there. And you guys know how much I love Geisley triggers, which means we're gonna have to go ahead and go set trigger. Go ahead and put your finger right over mine. We have a Geisley SSAE. Let's go ahead and feel that trigger. So we get <laughs> we get about a millimeter into it. We hit our first wall, two stage trigger. We hit that wall. Holy shit. I love Geisley triggers. Okay, feeling that reset. Just right there. We're right on that wall again. We are a maybe two pound let off. I don't want to go too far into Geisley triggers because we're not talking about them, but Geisley triggers are great because they use full power springs therefore they're going to be able to detonate um you know hard rifle primers and that type of stuff for military type ammo and they are just incredible big guys who make some good shit so going from there um at the back of the brn 180 lowers what's cool is you do have a 1913 rail so 1913 stocks i think are pretty cool in this case we have a aisle manufacturing adapter that goes over to a pt1 stock and it is, of course, it's a little bit vibey. Maybe it's not the most practical. I think AR-15 stocks in general are better, but I just kind of wanted to make something that was just kind of fun. So that's what we have there. Of course, any of your SIG stocks will fit on those 1913 um, adapters or M4 if you want, to, whatever you want to put on there, they will certainly work. But again, the cool part about the BRN-180 is being as it is a piston system, it does not need, well, specifically an AR-180 base system. It does not require a buffer spring of any type, so it can simply work with the stock folded. So that is, of course, a cool thing about this particular design. So kind of coming to the end here, guys, where does the BRN-180 stand? So coming to the end here, maybe you fast forward and you haven't heard me talking about it, but what are my thoughts on the BRN-180? So. The BRN-180 is a well-executed design by both Brownells and PWS. They have done great things in getting this manufactured, and it is an absolute blast to shoot with a suppressor on there. Now, that being said, I think this is a really good gun, a very accurate, very reliable gun. However, my real concern with this being a to hell and back type rifle, where this is what you have for the rest of your life, get out there, is of course this giant gap at the back being a great entry point for debris to go ahead and jam up your trigger, which is one of the weak points of the AR-15 system if it is exposed, which it isn't on most other systems. So that is my only real complaint about the system. Other than that, I think it is a well-designed executed rifle. So what does it come down to at the end? Maybe you haven't been watching, maybe you, you don't know my final thoughts. So 
The BRN180 is a well-executed, well-built upper from Brownells and PWS with their expertise. It is so much fun to shoot suppress. This is one of my favorite guns to shoot suppress. And I think there's a lot of really good design features in here. It is a very reliable and very robust system. That being said, my biggest complaint about it is the dust getting into the back right here and jamming up the mechanism. So when it comes to that, this isn't something that I would pick for a to hell and back rifle. This rifle isn't the first one I'm going to grab if the world is completely falling apart and the commies have invaded and I'm like, time to die commies. And I go to grab a gun and it's going to be the brown owls, as cool as this gun is. Now, that being said, it would certainly work, but I just have that concern due to the ability of that dust to get in there once the weapon is firing. So that is probably me being overly harsh because I think this is a really well-built rifle. Definitely go check them out. But here's the thing, guys. As cool as these are and as awesome as they look, the fact of the matter is that what really matters is training. So if this is all that you have, it's still a really well-built rifle. Don't let me dissuade you in any way. And again, look at other reviews at the same time because this is completely capable and is completely reliant on you. Make sure that you make yourself the weapon. Get training, guys. Tons of great people to get training from. Pat McNamara, Haley Strategic, probably my dad, Cogworks, Bear Solutions. Check them all out. They are all great people. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. And I've got nothing else for you. Final thing for you guys. Has to be said, internet is a violent place, but if you got nothing nice to say, probably best not to say it at all. There's a lot to be said about discretion. Be a little bit more constructive in the things that you tell people. Because you know what? The world revolves on kindness. Be a kinder person. Be a better person. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Big shout out to my Patreon people. You guys rock. Love you guys so much. We have tons more great stuff coming. As always, I've got enough else for you.